Afternoon everyone, um, thanks for being here. Uh, today I'm going to talk about a Watsonia control trial in the Mount Lofty Ranges, looking at the effectiveness of the chemical 2,2-DPA, uh, the impacts on native flora or the off-target damage and the influence of a prescribed burn. Uh, I first, we, we first learned about the um, potential of 2,2-DPA in the control of Watsonia from Kate Brown in uh, southwest Western Australia, who in 2000, 2012 undertook uh, a large-scale Watsonia control trial in endangered wetlands on the Swan Coastal Plain. Uh, and we thought that it would be useful to work out whether we could um, have similar results in the Mount Ranges and also test the off-target damage of the herbicide in, different, in our different communities over here. In the Mount Lofty Ranges, um, the Watsonia uh, has naturalised and it um, poses a huge threat to uh, bushland areas and where it invades native vegetation it tends to displace uh, most understory species eventually. And um, it, the region spends a lot of, uh, puts a lot of effort into Watsonia control. Uh, a lot of time and money and effort goes into Watsonia control to protect biodiversity at great expense. So um, I guess this method uh, looked like it might show promise for, uh, um, I guess, improving our uh, impact on what's <coughs> in what's only control and also at, at, at a lower uh, expense. So the species um, bo of Bobble Watsonia uh, that we're talking about has a large, um, a large fibrous bulb. It, um, it spreads through bulb division and also by dropping its bulbils which form up the flower spike in summer and it, uh, those bulbils are spread by animals and also uh, sheep water runoff. So just looking at the methods for the trial, uh, we started out with two uh, trial locations, one in Cleland Conservation Park and one just out of Lobethal on, on a roadside reserve. Uh, they're both stringy bark uh, woodland communities with a very similar understory and uh, they both had large Watsonia infestations of greater than 70% cover uh, but still with uh, quite a good diversity of understory species so that we could test the off-target damage, um, uh, potential off-target damage of 2,2 DPA. At the two sites we uh, permanently marked 20 1 by 1 metre quadrats and uh, treated half of each site with 2,2 uh, DPA at label rates with uh, pulse. Uh, these are the chemicals that we used. And then the Cleveland site uh, was burnt by a prescribed burn, which left us with four uh, unreplicated uh, treatments of uh, spraying with 2,2 DPA, a control, uh, a spray and burn treatment, and a just a burn treatment. And our, uh, the way we surveyed was via a one by one metre quadrat with 10 centimetre grid. And we basically marked all the species that occurred within that quadrat and how, how many uh, grid cells they appeared in. So uh, looking there, you can see that uh, Hibertia crinita appeared five times uh, out of 100 cells. So it gives, gave us a, a score out of 100 for each species uh, of, of abundance. So it's, um, it's a bit different to Estimating cover abundance, it's thought to maybe reduce some of the error um, in estimating uh, cover abundance, but um, that's how we did it. So was uh, the on-label rate of 2,2 DPA effective at killing Watsonia? Uh, of course, we went into this trial expecting it to be effective because it was, it was effective in Western Australia at killing Watsonia, and it's also on-label for, for Propon, but there was very little confidence in the local... Um, NRM community and, and environment community around the use of propon. It was a very, uh, uh, not a very well known chemical and so we just wanted to make sure that we could definitively say that it was effective. And uh, yes it was, so um, at our, uh, looking at the, uh, going from our pre-treatment data through to our um, one year and two year post-treatment data, there was a, a drop of Watsonia um, cover to almost negligible um, numbers. And you can see here uh, some of our photo point um, series. At the top we've got uh, pre-treatment, uh, so they're in pre-treatment, one year post-treatment and two year post-treatment. 
and you can see there at the top we had our spray and burn treatment, uh, pre-treatment data, uh, what's only was evidence, and, and then post-treatment data, it was absent. Uh, in the middle we had just our burn treatment, of course it had very little effect on the Watsonia. And then at the bottom you can see our, um, just our spray treatment and it did, was very effective at, at um, taking out the Watsonia. You can see here a close up of that uh, spray treatment, um, uh, pre-treatment pre uh, photo and then post-treatment one year later. So yeah, it was quite effective. And then two years later, um, you, uh, two years post-treatment you can see that the um, the gaps caused from the Watsonia death are starting to close up. So was there off-target damage uh, to native species uh, at, uh, um, caused by 2,2 DPA at, at the label rates? Um, there was uh, some off-target damage, so um, there, was a, there were a handful of species which showed a decrease in abundance at one year post-treatment, and they were Drosera, Auriculata, Lepidosperma semiteres, um, Leptosperma mercenoides, Lamandra fibrata, Stachousia, and Thysonotus. Um, on the whole, uh, what's on, uh, 2,2 DPA showed uh, great uh, selectivity towards Watsonia, and there was, for most of the species at, at, the, um, at the sites, uh, there was a little off target damage, but for these species, there was uh, a, a drop um, at that first year post treatment which uh, at that point of the trial we decided to, um, that there was enough uh, promise in the treatment to continue on with um, further trials, but we wanted to work out uh, different methods um, that might have, uh, that might lower the off-target damage. Before I move on, um, you, can also, you can see that at post, uh, two years post-treatment, most of those species that were affected negatively by the, by the treatment have actually recovered to a large degree, um, which was interesting. But I'd, we didn't know that at the time but, uh, when we decided to move on to bring in an, a, a third site to the project just out of Alhanna. Um, had similar characteristics but we tried 2,2 DPA at half label rates and we also tried different surfactants um, wondering whether uh, the, the uh, addition of pulse might have uh, increased the effectiveness of uh, or killed to, to native species at the first two sites. So, uh, did using uh, the half rate uh, of 2,2 TPA reduce the off-target damage? Uh, it certainly did. Um, at the new site where we treated, um, there was uh, no drop in any native species um, at one year post-treatment. So all species actually increased, uh, aside from the Watsonia, uh, all species actually increased in abundance at one year post-treatment. Not only that, those species which showed uh, susceptibility to the herbicide at full strength, which are listed there, um, they all, um, even if it was just slightly, but they all increased in abundance at one year post-treatment. So it was quite successful. Uh, but was the half uh, rate of 2,2 DPA still effective at killing uh, the Watsonia? Uh, it, it was. It had very similar effects as the full rate. So, um, yeah, uh, this is the uh, result of, yeah, the half rate on, um, yeah, on Watsonia. And you can see that at uh, one location we had um, no wetting agent added. At another we, had, we used pulse and another we used a normal non-ionic wetting agent. Um, and interestingly, despite whether there was a wetting agent or what that wetting agent was, um, the herbicide was still very effective at um, killing Watsonia. Just looking at some of those photo points of the uh, half rate. So this is uh, our half rate 2 to DPA with no wetting agent uh, pre-treatment. And then post-treatment, um, most of the Watsonia is gone. Um, half rate with a normal uh, ag wetter or non-ionic wetting agent. Pre-treatment and one year post-treatment, again, most of the Watsonia is gone. Um, so a quick look at the treatment's effect on native <coughs> species diversity. So. Um, what this uh, is telling us is that um, across all of our different treatments between the uh, pre-treatment data and the one year post-treatment data, there was very, 
there really wasn't a significant shift in species diversity in that short one year time frame, but it, it did show that, um, that uh, at the second year post treatment when a bit more time had passed um, at the sites those gaps started to be filled with either uh, regeneration of, of, uh, of the site and new species. We had seedlings coming through and new species arriving, native species arriving at the site. So those gaps that were created by the Watsonia being killed are starting to be filled at the second year post treatment. And interestingly, um, the influence of the pre prescribed burn was that it basically just sped up that process and we had uh, at the burn and spray treatment site we had um, uh, a lot more recruitment, you know, all of the dead Watsonia biomass uh, was burnt away by the prescribed burn and uh, those gaps were filled and the, the soil seed bank was stimulated by fire. So, um, just in summary, 2,2 uh, DPA uh, does look like it's uh, a very effective uh, at selectively killing Watsonia in um, stringy bark woodland. At label rates, we did have some off-target damage, but at half the label rate, it was still effective at killing Watsonia, and there was no measurable off-target damage um, to native species. And the use of fire um, really sped up that uh, regeneration process um, by removing the dead material and stimulating the seed bank, so it could be a really useful tool uh, when treating large Watsonia populations. And I think 2,2 DPA really uh, might present us a very uh, meaningful uh, treatment technique for those large Watsonia sites which until now have been outside of the scope of traditional kind of cutting and swabbing and wiping techniques. So um, I'm yeah, really excited about rolling out this technique on la more large, larger sites. We've been able to deal with the small infestations to date with um, traditional techniques but I think we've got, now we've got something we can uh, bite us some, some more significant patches. And just to note that um, the results are based upon um, an unreplicated data set within a single vegetation community, so we do need to take caution if we're treating Watsonia in other sites with different species and uh, in different situations. Thanks. Oh, so we got some time for questions. Anyone got any questions? Yep. Uh, is that a pre Um No. In autumn, so we, we sprayed um, the sites in uh, spring, as, tr as you traditionally would with, with um, Watsonia, and then waited through till the following autumn and undertook the burn. Yep. So that's just to burn off the dead Watsonia? Yeah, yeah. So it was actually part of a, a plan, already planned prescribed burn, uh, so it was quite a, lar you know, a larger patch that was burnt, but yeah, it, uh, as part of the trial it was to take away, after you do the Watsonia um, treatment, as you, I'm sure you're familiar, uh, you kind of often left with a lot of fibrous, you know, bulb mass and and uh, dead. Even the following year, you've got lots of dead um, leaves on site, and it just it sort of burns all that away. We actually found orchids. Like you noticed um, that the the species diversity at the burn site increased quite dramatically by that second year. It's because stuff things. Um, had, had come in um, on that bare ground where the Watsonia bulbs had been burnt off and um, it had created a much more um, suitable environment for orchids and things to actually colonise, even on top of the, the dead uh, but burnt um, bulb masses. So, yeah, it was just sort of opened up the site for recruitment. Yeah, Tom. Yeah, so interestingly, um, the reason we, we actually went in with caution was because it's um, a herbicide which is um, monocot specific, so it should be killing grasses, lilies, or, you know, all of our lily uh, genera sh you know, should be affected by this chemical, but interestingly, uh, it seems like we held on to all of those species at the trial sites, uh, all the, the arthropodium, the bullbine, even the orchids uh, were all up at the time of spraying and they were all there the next year, so at, at the half rate at least. So the only species that didn't come back at the full rate um, was um, the Stackhousia, and that was, it, but it's hard to say because there was actually only one Stackhousia 
in the entire trial and it wasn't there the next year. But it's, <laughs> yeah, so hard to say there. But. So, yeah, lilies, grasses, yeah, grassy, I guess red gum grassy woodlands is a site, is a community which often is vulnerable to Watsonia and uh, I guess there's lots of species in that community that should be vulnerable to the herbicide but interestingly in Western Australia in similar communities they're having a lot of success. So it shows promise. Beautiful. All right, do you have a